Durham Fire Department wants you to know how to properly use a fire extinguisher to safely extinguish a fire that can happen anywhere you have a fuel source, heat, and oxygen. We know what some of you might be thinking. What's so difficult about using a fire extinguisher? You just pull the trigger and aim at the fire, right? Not exactly. We're gonna show you how to use this safe and simple tool that when used correctly, could very well be effective in saving you, your friends, your family, or your coworkers' lives. For centuries, people endeavored to invent better, safer ways to fight fires. From bucket chains to fire grenades, fire science is constantly evolving. In 1723, English chemist Ambrose Godfrey filled a container with a liquid suppressant attached to a gunpowder charge that could be thrown into a fire. The gunpowder would ignite, causing an explosion which would spread the suppressant liquid and hopefully put out the fire. We're not going to be doing that today. Okay, I guess we won't. Today, we'll be using a modern version of British inventor William Mansby's pressurized fire extinguisher system, invented sometime between 1810 and 1818. You see, his idea was... That okay, that's the down and dirty history of the fire extinguisher. If your curiosity has peaked, you can visit our website here for more. For now, let's get into the nuts and bolts of the fire extinguisher. First, the cylinder. This holds the extinguishing agent under pressure. Next, the safety pin. It locks the operating lever, preventing accidental discharge. The pull seal holds your safety pin in place until you're ready for extinguishment. The pressure gauge indicates the correct operating pressure when the arrow is in the green. If your arrow is not in the green, your extinguisher must be serviced immediately. The operating handle or lever triggers the discharge of the extinguishing agent. The hose or nozzle direct the stream of the extinguishing agent. A fire extinguisher works by disrupting the connection between the fuel, the heat, and the oxygen. This inhibits the chemical chain reaction that creates fire. Whatever is burning is called fuel. Some fire extinguishers work by smothering the fire, thus removing the available oxygen. Others work by cooling the fire and cooling the fuel load. That's why it's important to remember to point the extinguisher at the fuel, not the flames. There are many different types of fuels that we come in contact with every day that could possibly ignite. With so many different types of fuels, it's important that we have the proper fire extinguishers for the fires that they create. The three main types of fuels that we'll be talking about today are Class A, B, and C. Class A fuels are paper, wood, and plastics. We call these ordinary combustibles. Class B fuels are flammable liquids and gases, such as propane, oil, and gasoline. Class C fuels are electrical in nature, motors, appliances, and transformers. Remember, if you de-energize the equipment, it becomes a Class A fire. Now, let's get into the three main types of extinguishers you will have in your home, work, or at school. First, we have the water can. The water can is best used on Class A fires. You can easily recognize this extinguisher by its large stainless steel cylinder. It's not commonly seen in homes or businesses. A water can is not recommended for electrical fires or easily ignited liquids such as gasoline. In an electrical fire, the water could possibly conduct electricity, electrocuting you. In a flammable liquid fire, you could easily spread the fuel, making the fire larger. Water cans function by lowering the temperature of the fuel, thus extinguishing the fire and are highly effective on fuels such as paper, wood, and cardboard. Be very careful when using a water can. Things are gonna get very wet. Also, be very careful on slippery surfaces. Grease fire tip. Don't spread the flame. Be extremely cautious when using an extinguisher on a grease fire. You could cause splatter, which could spread the fire and make the fire larger. If it is safe to do so, cover the pan with a lid and turn off the heat. Next, we have the CO2 or carbon dioxide extinguisher. This extinguisher is best used on electrical fires, but can be used on class B fires. CO2 is stored as a liquid in the cylinder, but when discharged, turns into a gas that is heavier than air. This heavier than air gas displaces oxygen around the fire. No oxygen, no fire, no mess. You can recognize a CO2 extinguisher by its large delivery horn and its lack of a pressure gauge. The only way to know if a CO2 extinguisher is full is to weigh it. You can find the weight requirements stamped on the side of the cylinder as you see here. When using any kind of extinguisher on an electrical fire, always be sure to turn the power off to the item that's on fire. If you cannot get close enough to the item to turn the power off, 
you can always go to the panel box and turn the power off there. The most widely used type of a fire extinguisher is the dry powder or ABC extinguisher. You're most likely to see this type of extinguisher at work, at home, or even at school. It uses a chemical called monoammonium phosphate under high pressure. This chemical works by smothering the fire. Monoammonium phosphate is a pale, yellow, dry, powder-like substance that works great on all three classes of fire. Class A for your wood, paper, and plastics, Class B for your flammable liquids like gasoline, oil, and propane, and Class C, which are electrical in nature for appliances, motors, and transformers. Just a few tips when using an ABC extinguisher. They are very messy, so be prepared. Also remember that the pale yellow chemical will linger in the air for some time. Use caution when handling an ABC extinguisher. If the pin is not in place and you discharge the extinguisher by accident, it will need to be serviced and recharged. If your ABC extinguisher has sat unused for an extended period of time, the powder will settle, making the fire extinguisher less effective. Occasionally, turn your extinguisher upside down and allow the powder to shift. There are other types of extinguishers, such as Class D, used for flammable metals. And when dining out, you may see a Class K fire extinguisher. These are used in commercial kitchens. Make sure you know where your fire extinguishers are located in your workplace. One day, you may need to use them. Now, let's get into how to properly operate your fire extinguisher, starting with the three A's, alert, assist, and attempt. Alert. In the event of a fire, your safety is the most important thing. If you smell smoke or see flames, be sure to call 911. Designate a specific person to make the call. Make eye contact with them and ensure that they alert the authorities. The next A is assist. Make sure you designate someone to get everybody safely out of the building and to their assembly points. Remember to assist anyone with mobility issues. Attempt. Use the extinguisher. You only have a few seconds of suppressant left in the cylinder. A general rule of thumb is you can extinguish a fire about two times the size of your fire extinguisher. Now, let's get down to technique. An easy acronym to remember in regards to using your extinguisher is PASS, or pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. Step one, pull the pin. This pin is easily removed, unlocking the operating mechanism of the handle or lever. Your extinguisher might have a pull seal. Pull seals ensure that the pin stays secure to prevent accidental activation of your extinguisher. They're lightweight and made to be broken easily with just a twist. Step two, aim. Aim your fire extinguisher's nozzle at the base of the fire. The flames are not what is burning. You must cool the fuel that is burning. Step three is squeeze. Operating from a safe distance, squeeze your handle down. Step four, sweep. Operating from a safe distance, sweep the nozzle back and forth at the base of the fire. Never turn your back on the fire. Once you have emptied the extinguisher, safely exit the building, closing all doors behind you, and join the rest of your group at the designated assembly point. Remember, even if you don't completely extinguish the fire, your actions have given others a chance to reach safety, and that's a win. That's it. Congratulations. You are now better prepared to respond in case you need to use that red thing on the wall.